Okay. We're joined now by our race winner of the 54th annual Coke Zero 400. And that driver is Tony Stewart. He drove the number 14 Mobile One Office Depot Chevrolet for Stewart Haas Racing. He's joined by his crew chief, Steve Addington. Just a couple of notes here. For Tony, this is his third win in 2012. So him and Keselowski now are tied for the most wins in the series. And that pays dividends come chase time with the bonus points. 18 wins now at Do Daytona overall. 18 wins at Daytona, second all-time behind Dale Earnhardt. 18 wins at, Day at Daytona. 47 wins in NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. 47 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series wins. That is now 14th all-time, passing Hall of Fame inductee Buck Baker. Tony, congratulations. Certainly there was a lot of uh, action out there here, particularly late in the race, but how did you get to the, see the get to the checkered flag how did you do it uh the, the guy sitting next to us honestly um you know we start at the back there and we're a little probably too cautious at the, i was a little too cautious at the beginning and uh you know we came out of the pits after that first green flag stop uh, you know I, we lost connection with the lead pack there and uh got with brad keselowski and david reagan and uh, you know just tried to minimize the damage there as far as the the time we were losing but um you know, got a caution there and got regrouped and, um, you know, it just made sure that when the green came out <laughs> that time, I, I didn't wait and we got going on the outside and, and gained a lot of spots there and got ourselves in the top 10. And, um, you know, then uh, Steve had a great call there that actually got us the lead with, uh, two tires there. Um, you know, I think three stops or two stops from the end or two cautions from the end. And, uh, you yeah, know, that was the key. I mean, we, we were able to hold that track position, uh, got the lead on the restart, and, um, you know, we, we just we were pretty good on the bottom. We, the, the biggest challenge was the 17 and 16 car, obviously, and when they hooked up, uh, I don't think there was anybody that could beat them. But, um, you know, we, we were able to stay in touch with them, uh, and, and I got a great restart with Casey Kane uh, helping me uh, on that last restart there, and um, I'm not sure how he got – shuffled back there in one and two but um you know we just had to try to you know separate the the 17 and 16 there and once we got them pulled apart i think matt tried to back up to reconnect with uh greg and and you know we carried enough momentum to get back around in front of them and get back down in that bottom line and i tried to back up to matt to make sure they didn't get a huge run on us but um you know they they were coming on the outside there uh, in three and four and then uh, the the last wreck happened there we just Happen to be fortunate enough to be uh, leading still. Thank you, Tony and uh, Steve Addington. Uh, certainly, the crew paid a, played a big role in tonight's win. Just talk about uh, how things went on pit road and also some of the key changes maybe you guys made during the course of the event. Well, I mean, <laughs> starting last, it was uh, kind of tough, but I think once we got the caution and got caught back up there, we were we were losing in you know touch with the lead pack there when uh, Brad and I get David Reagan and Tony were sitting there running the lap times where I was getting a little worried, but then I was hoping we'd get a caution and we got one and we got up in there and the guys, they do an awesome job on our pit stops week in, week out. So uh, they, they rode off a good pit stop and then we ran about eight laps there and, and my engineer was telling me, you know, if we come now, we can do it on one can if it goes green to the end. And uh, so we decided to come and put right sides on then and get in top off with fuel. So that put us in a position for the late race caution deal when we came down and got right sides and uh, one can of fuel and we, we could make it to the end and that got us the lead. Okay, we'll take questions now for Tony or Steve. Let's start back in the corner with Ken and then we'll go to George and then Holly. Tony, I know you've probably tried to explain this before, but one more time, how do you explain to people the fact that you – are obviously no fan of this style of racing, yet you happen to be re rather good at it. I mean, how do you explain that uh, <laughs> correlation there? I wish I could explain it, but, um, and, you know, it, it's hard. I mean, it's hard. Uh, you know, the, the, the great thing about it is that 43 cars all have the same shot at winning the race, but uh, that's also part of what makes it frustrating, too. But, um, you know, we, we've, we've had really good luck at Daytona, obviously, um, you know, and... I wish I could trade a couple of these races in for just one, uh, you know, Sunday race in February. But uh, you know, it's uh, 
you know, just being at the right place at the right time. And, and you know, when those last two uh, big wrecks happened, I mean, we definitely were in the right spot. I mean, we were ahead of them both times. Let's go right there to George, and then we'll go to Holly. Go ahead, George. Yeah, Tony, George Diaz, Orlando Sentinel. Given how strong Kenseth and Biffle were going into that final, uh, the restart, did you, how did you feel? Did you feel you still had a good shot to, to overtake them? Or? Um, I knew I had a good car behind me with Casey Kane, obviously. Um, you know, knowing that those two guys were going to be teamed up with each other on the bottom, I, I w was surprised we got as good a restart as we did. But uh, Casey did a great job of getting hooked on the bumper right away. And uh, it seemed like we actually held our own and actually were a little bit better on the outside than those two cars were. But, uh, um, you know, that was that was key was being able to, to keep hooked up. And when we were leading on the bottom before that last caution, uh, two different times those guys got hooked up together, and when they did, they were like a steam drain coming on the outside. So uh, I'm sure if I would have backed up to, to Kyle Busch, we would have been pretty fast too, but I'm not sure if you know we could have held those two off. Let's go to Holly, and then we'll go to the press box. Holly Kane, FoxSports.com. Two questions, Tony. One, close calls tonight. What was What was the closest call that you had to getting caught up in all of the – craziness that was going on and secondly I don't know if you look at it like that but three wins already this year is a very strong statement towards the championship and just continuing you know what you did last year if you could speak to that I'm not sure we really I mean we got pretty fortunate to not really have any of those close calls I guess when Kurt Busch you know had that that one problem in one and two that was the closest to drama that we had and it really wasn't that bad I mean the the ones after that seemed to be a lot bigger and caught up a lot more cars but um, and for the most part, I, I guess probably the fact that we were looking at going a lap down because we lost touch with that lead draft was probably the biggest drama we had. But, um, you know, really proud of Steve and really proud of everybody at Stuart Haas Racing and uh, the Hendrick Engine and Chassis Department. We're really, really uh, pleased with the first half of the season. I mean, I think there's some races that um, we lost some opportunities on, but I think there were races that we capitalized on that we haven't been able to in the past. So I think, uh, you know, in the average, I think we're, we're really looking good right now. So uh, proud of the effort with everybody. I feel like on the average, I feel like we're, we're making gains. So uh, it's uh, it's nice to come into this weekend and leaving here tonight. I'm, I'm leaving with a big weight lifted off our shoulders. I, I think qualifying yesterday was what I was most proud of for the weekend. And, you know, even though we, we lost our time, um, you know, have these two cars come here and be second and third quick by separated by only eight thousandths of a second. It shows how good a job the guys did at our at our race shop. So, uh, really, really proud of everybody at, at our uh, in our organization and felt like that was showed some strength today. Let's go to press box questions in the press box. Go ahead, please. I'm Mark Dakota of Motorsports Unplugged for Tony. Tony, this is the last time that this um, edition of the car of tomorrow or whatever you want to call it will run at Daytona since you're going to the new cars next year. Can you summarize your thoughts on how this car has performed at Daytona? Thank you. Um, I guess they've been fine. I mean, it's, you know, the, the hard part is that we're all running wide open and we're all in a pack and we can't get away from each other. So um, I'm not sure it's the car that necessarily has done that. But, uh, you know, I think every time we come here, the, the field's more competitive and, um, you know, it, it's proof by how many guys have a shot to win the race. And, uh, you know, guys that, that you won't see up front next week were guys that you saw at some point that uh, were in the top 10 tonight. So, um, you know, it, it shows how good a job everybody does at the restricted plate tracks. And um, it, it is proof that, that everybody has a shot to win these things and to run in the top five when they get here. It's just a matter of, um, you know, getting that luck on your side and being at the right place at the right time and, and having that opportunity. Back downstairs, questions for Tony or Steve. Any other questions? <clears throat> right here, Dwight. Uh, Dwight Drum, uh, uh Tony, uh, uh, I kind of want to, uh, just a little bit off the subject, but congratulations on the win, obviously. But uh, the, the other day you did a commercial with uh, Daryl Gwynn and uh, the production people, you came in and, and did the, uh, uh, spoke your lines. So you look at the lines for about 20 seconds. You pulled it off and you impressed everybody with your ability to do that. And I was just wondering if your skills as a driver are obvious, but uh, could you kind of explain that? Was it all that experience in doing that? Or, uh... 
I credit Columbus North High School for all that. I could read the lines. So um, I, I don't think I do any better job than anybody else. Um, there was another guy there that memorized his lines. I just came in and read the uh, cards that they had for me. So, uh, but it's, you know, I think the more you do it, the more comfortable you are. And, you know, after about 17 or 18 years of either racing stock cars or indie cars, we've done it a little bit. So uh, it's, it's not totally new to us. Bob Pachris. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Um, Tony, this obviously is a little different than after <laughs> Talladega. So I'm curious, is, from your seat, is, it, is the racing any different here than Talladega, or do you, are you just a, or is today just survive the wrecks and, and be up front? I, I think we just survived the wrecks. I mean, we, you look where we were at when they happened. I mean, they happened right behind us each time. So, uh, you know, the, the track position that Steve got us was, that, that was very key. I mean, it, if we got stuck you know fourth or fifth on back i mean we were we were going to be one of those cars that got caught in the wreck so uh fortunately we were we were ahead of them both times but uh you know looking at the replays of the last two cautions um it, it's not any different here other questions for uh, tony or steve tony before i let you go i just want to congratulate you on your nomination for the SB coming up as driver of the year maybe just talk about that what that means particularly for your uh, racing organization to be uh, held in such high esteem? It's an honor just to be nominated. It's, um, you know, I'm really proud of our group, like I mentioned uh, about this year. I mean, I was really proud of what uh, they were able to accomplish the last 10 weeks last year. And, um, you know, that that's anytime you get nominated in that category with so many great race car drivers, it's just uh, an honor to be considered. So i um, very appreciative of that. Congratulations, Tony and Steve. And, uh, Continued good luck the rest of the year. We'll see you at New Hampshire. Thank you. Thanks.